Well, hello there, this is Travis Romine, and today we're gonna to be talking about how I decided what size solar system to get for my needs. Let's check it out. All right, well, after you decide to get solar, the first question is, what size solar system do I get? What are my needs? So I'll break it down, I get into my bill and I went through all my kilowatts and all that and figured out how what size system I wanted to get. But before I get into that, I just wanna let you know that I do uh, monthly videos on my electric bill um, with solar and I break all that down if you wanna see that and I do my monthly production of my solar and uh, I'm gonna to continue to do videos through that all year long and run the numbers at the end of the year to see how much money I saved. So if you're interested in that, please like and subscribe. All right, well, I use Southern California Edison and I don't get a paper bill, so if I log on to my Edison account, this is what you'll see. And as you can see on the bottom left-hand corner, um, it says view usage. So if I go ahead and click on that. This is the build months. So before I got solar, um, this is a good view of my usage. October 9th to November 9th, 2020. You can see that my average daily usage was around 26 kilowatts uh, for a total of the entire month of uh, 811 kilowatts. So as you can see, each day it shows how many kilowatts you use per day. Um, the big spikes right around 44.41 44 kilo, 44 kilowatts, those are days that I charged my electric car. So yeah, you can see the big spikes on those days. And the other days are just uh, usage from the house. Uh, looks like sometimes I'll charge my car just a little bit, but the big spikes are when the car was really low and I had to charge it. So yeah, that's a good view of before I got solar. All right. Well, this is the monthly trend over the last year. Um, you can see from March 2020 to February 2021, this shows all the kilowatts I used each month. Uh, my Southern California Edison only goes back a year, so this kind of shows where we're at over the last year. And as you can see, my usage was anywhere from maybe over a little over 1200 kilowatts in August to maybe 600 kilowatts in December. Not much air conditioning using in December. Didn't do a whole lot of driving with my electric car. So yeah. And in January, right around the 7th, I got my solar. So when I started using my solar, you can see that I have a lot higher energy credits. So I'm overproducing quite a bit. Now to figure out what size solar system I wanted to get, um, I wanted to go by kilowatts. Uh, some places have you go by your energy bill. So, I mean, that is a way of doing it and that's fine. Um, you just add up your bill all year long, 12 months bills, and then divide it by 12. And that'll give you your average bill. And some people size your solar system by doing that, which is good. Um, I want to do mine by kilowatt, so I added up, I took all my monthly trends here, I added up all my kilowatts for the entire year and divided that by 365 days, so I would get my average daily kilowatt, which was right around 30 kilowatts a day um, for the year. And this is a great way to find out how many kilowatts is your average daily kilowatt. So this is the Tesla website. When you go to the Tesla Solar, they'll have you put in your address so they know your electric company and your location, and they'll have you put in your electric bill, your average electric bill. And I wanted to go by kilowatts, so I just threw in a number of $230 to get the screen to pull up, and I noticed that it suggested the 8.16 kilowatt, and the daily solar production would be between 27 to 39 kilowatts, and after averaging out my kilowatts per day, I knew that I'd be right around 30. So this size system was actually perfect for my current needs. But I knew that I would be having future needs of, you know, we're going to be using more air conditioner. We're going to be getting more electric cars. So I knew my energy uh, needs would be going up. So I wanted to upgrade to the 12.24 kilowatt system. And I noticed that the 40 to 59 kilowatt daily solar production was probably more than I needed, but I wanted to future-proof it, so I went ahead and got that, and I knew that any extra solar that I got uh, that was sent back to the grid, I would get a credit for, so that's always kind of nice, but typically you just want to um, size your system for your needs. You don't want to overproduce unless you, uh, like me, have needs in the future that you know you're going to be wanting more electricity. So yeah, that's kind of how I sized my solar system. 
So here is February 9th to March 11th, 2021. This shows my uh, monthly energy usage uh, day to day. So you can kind of see that I definitely overproduce every day, you know, with the pandemic and different things like that. Um, we haven't been doing a lot of driving with our cars. So yeah, I'm definitely way overproducing, but I, I plan in the future to be using a lot more electricity. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's showing that my average daily usage is negative 22 kilowatts and my total usage for the for that month was negative 665 kilowatts um but yeah um using uh not as much electricity right now so <laughs> it's looking like i got a way bigger system well this is what it looks like on march 21st 2021 it looks like my average usage that day was negative 34 kilowatts you can see at 12 a.m., uh, my kilowatt usage is quite high. That's when my electric car starts charging right around 12 a.m. So yeah, it charges up right there. And then it drops down about 3 a.m. in the morning when it starts to, um, the car stops charging. And then around 6 a.m., you know, people start getting up using electricity. And then uh, right around 7, 8 a.m., the solar panels kick in and you see all that energy credit that the solar panels uh, give all the way to around 6 o'clock, maybe 7 o'clock. And then... Uh, the average usage is about one kilowatt the rest of the night there. So yeah, that's what a average usage looks like uh, in one day. Yeah, so we're producing quite a bit of energy and we're in a year billing period. So over the entire year, some months you'll generate a lot more electricity and in some months you'll use more electricity. So I'm doing this over the whole year. So we'll see at the end of the year with the net metering, um, how much energy we overproduce. Um, I'm assuming the first year we're gonna overproduce a lot because we don't have all our electric cars yet, so it's going to be a while before we get those, maybe a year or two, so we'll see how that goes. But the overall plan for solar was to eliminate the electric bill for the rest of my life and to get electric cars and never have to pay for gasoline the rest of our life. So it was just trying to eliminate bills and save money over the years. So this was the plan and uh, we're documenting it here on YouTube. So just kind of follow us and see how it uh, ends up turning out. Yeah. So. That's how I sized my system. I went by kilowatts instead of billing. Both of those are good, but I wanted to go by uh, kilowatts for my usage. When you're going by billing, um, you know, some people get discounts in their billing, like the CARE program or different programs for discounts. So when you go by billing, you gotta take that into effect. And I knew that if I went by kilowatts, that that would be probably more accurate, but they're both pretty close. But uh, yeah, that's how I sized my solar system. So if you want to see more videos like this, please like and subscribe. I got a referral code for Tesla down in the description. If you want some free stuff from Tesla for ordering a car or ordering solar, use my uh, referral code and you get some free stuff. They change that month to month. So uh, yeah, it's free. So go ahead and use it.